Good morning, good afternoon or good evening guys. Welcome to the Bitcoin Family YouTube show. For the newcomers, my name is Didi Tayutu and maybe you remember me and my family from three and a half years ago when we sold our house, our company, our cars, everything we owned, we went all into Bitcoin and started traveling the world. Now, three years later, it's coming to you guys from Alicante, Spain on this beautiful almond tree plantation where I will talk to you about blockchain, crypto and life. In today's video, we are going to talk, of course, about the Bitcoin price. We are going to talk about how to register an unstoppable domain because I just did and I'm going to try to educate you guys on 51% attacks what does this mean and could this also happen to the Bitcoin blockchain a lot of other cool information like a homemade pizza in this video to make sure you watch the full video guys enjoy it to the fullest Let's take another jump out of my camper to a beautiful place here in Alicante, Spain. Whoa. Good morning guys, welcome to this amazing location. What is it? We are now in the middle of an almond tree plantation. A almond tree plantation? Yes guys, an almond tree plantation. These trees are the trees that grow all these tasteful almonds. Um, Let's see if I can show you them because I need to make these videos now because they are going to harvest these trees somewhere in the next week. Of course, I will show you that process as well. But this is how these almonds look when they are still on the tree. Can you see? You can see these almonds in the trees. Here you can pick them out. All of these trees are full with almonds. No, of course, it's not a beautiful view I showed you yesterday from these hills, but still, it's a really cool thing to see that there are many of these fields full with almond trees. I saw them last year as well, but then they were in the blossom, so then the fields are completely white, and now it's almost time to harvest them again and make some almond milk out of them or make some almond cream out of them or just eat the fresh almonds. There are also some olive trees in between them so I will show them later. Guys, let's talk about Bitcoin. Do you remember this chart last week I showed you um, created by Steve from the CryptoQ University where this blue line needed to go into this red line at the same time, the HV should be below 40, which would indicate we would see an explosion into Bitcoin. It was a chart with the Bitcoin price, the NVT and the HV. At that moment, we could see the HV already below 40, but we didn't see the blue line going into a red line. We, the line was still completely blue. This did just change. I hope you still remember last week's chart, but take a look at this chart now. Bam! the HV is still below 40 and the blue line turned into red, which is an indicator that Bitcoin is going to explode very soon. We are going to see a huge price run in Bitcoin very soon because every time the HV was below 40 and this blue line went into this red line, we saw a huge price jump just before the 2017 bull run, just before 2019, the run from 4K to 14K. Now, HV below 40, blue line turning red, we are going up very soon. It's going to be a huge move in my opinion. That is a very interesting thing that this blue line is turning red now and the HV is below 40. I'm now seeing this beautiful olive tree i think it's an olive tree i will show you this tree as well so you can see the difference or tell the difference between an olive tree and an almond tree on this beautiful almond plantation as you can see the olive tree look, looks completely different different green and bigger 
But let's get back to Bitcoin because I have a little bit more understanding from crypto than I have from almond trees or olive trees, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Um, let's take a look at this beautiful chart. Bam. This chart, you can see the moving averages. It's a weekly chart. You can see the 21 week moving average and you can see the 50 weekly moving average. These two are very important because they can be used as an indicator to see if Bitcoin is going up or down. Every time the 21 weekly moving average, the yellow line is crossing down on the 50 weekly moving average, it's a bearish sign Bitcoin is going down. Every time the opposite happens, the 21 weekly moving average is crossing above the 50 weekly moving average, it's a bullish sign. Bitcoin is going up. Now look closely at this chart. What do you see? What is happening at the moment? Correct. You can see that this yellow line is crossing above the green line. The 21 MA is crossing above the 50 MA. And if you look to the left on the chart now, to that side, look to the left, you can see the history. What happened every time that this yellow line crossed above the green line? Look to 2017. Can you see the point on the chart where the yellow line crosses the green line? And if you look from that point to the right, you can see how big the bull run was. Then look to 2019. Can you find the moment the yellow line again crossed the green line? March, around March 2019, yes, again, we went from 4K to 14K. And now again, this yellow line is crossing above the green line. So what do you think that is going to happen? If you are thinking about buying Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin now. Because I think these two charts are very good indicators that Bitcoin is going up very soon. Yes, we can see small corrections, but if you're in this game to be a day trader, then you need to trade daily. If you're into it to be an investor for the long term, then just buy Bitcoin now. Join this beautiful bull run all the way up to 100K or 400K, like Anthony Pampliano said yesterday in a podcast. I believe 400K is also possible because I shared the same chart yesterday in my video, the road to 20K and 400K in Bitcoin. If you didn't see the video of yesterday, please watch the video because this chart is telling you exactly which road we will take to reach 20K and 400K in Bitcoin in the coming bull run. Yesterday evening, guys, by the way, we were making homemade pizzas in this homemade pizza oven. My daughter, Juna, and my wife, Romain, were making the pizzas and my father-in-law and my brother-in-law, they were baking the pizzas. When Juna was making the pizza, she was making a pizza with pineapple, which raised the question to me, do you eat pizza with pineapple? Does pineapple belong to a pizza or not? So of course I asked this to my Instagram followers. Yes, I have Instagram as well. And the biggest part of the people, I think, responded, yes, pineapple belongs to a pizza. Let me know your opinion. Does pineapple belong to a pizza? I know it's an old discussion, but I just thought of it yesterday because when we're creating these pizzas and baking them in this beautiful traditional wood burning oven, the pizzas tasted amazing. It was an amazing evening with some drinks, a beautiful late night evening in Spain with a homemade limoncello and afterwards with a tasteful rum and coke. So guys, to do a short recap, yes, in my opinion, it's a beautiful moment to start and buy Bitcoin and many other cryptocurrencies because if Bitcoin will make a run, many currencies will drop in price. You can pick them up very cheap. And then when Bitcoin goes sideways again, around 14 to 16K, these cryptocurrencies will make another bull run, just like they did now during the period Bitcoin went sideways between 9K and 10,500. You know, the last six weeks when all these currencies like Chainlink, uh, SNX, all go ERD, all these currencies, even Dogecoin, they flew up in the period Bitcoin went sideways. When Bitcoin will go up now again, please use a stop loss on your alts because they can drop in value and then take the bull run in Bitcoin and then again buy your alt bags cheaply. This is the game I play as an investor slash trader sometimes so I can provide my family of other food than these free almonds we can pick here in the gardens in Spain. Yes, we like to have normal food as well. Some really cool news from Coinbase and Unstoppable Domains. I don't know if you heard the article, but Coinbase now working together with Unstoppable Domains. You can buy your unstoppable domain.crypto 
in the Coinbase app. This is really cool because unstoppable domains are called unstoppable domains because nobody can stop them. It's totally different than the normal domains that are registered at the ECON because they have the power to stop your domain if they think they need to. And with unstoppable domains, this is not possible because it's completely decentralized. Really cool, you can buy unstoppable domains now at Coinbase. I already bought them last year when they announced they were going to use them. I already have my DidiTaihutu.zil domain. I already registered the BitcoinFamily.crypto domain. Yes, they are a little bit more expensive than a normal domain because you pay 40 bucks for uh, to register a domain, but you only pay this once. It's not a yearly recurrent fee you need to pay. So in my opinion, it's really cheap to buy your domains now. If you wanna buy some domains, you can use my referral link because then I earn a little commission and like you are used from me, I am sharing these commissions with the poor people all over the world. Then guys, there is another news item I want to talk to you about because this one is a very important one. It's a huge discussion we had already for a couple of years now. It's about the 51% attack. Because the article is about Ethereum Classic that just had another 51% attack. I don't know if all of you know what a 51% attack is, so I will try to explain this very shortly. You probably know that when it comes to cryptocurrency, mining is a very important part. When a miner gets more than 50% of the hashing power of a blockchain, they could do a 51% attack on that blockchain. Because then the blockchain is not decentralized anymore, but very centralized because all the power is in the hands of one miner or mining company. So how does it work? I will try to keep it simple. So this miner that has more than 51% can start another chain. So then you would have two chains. This means he made a hard fork of the main chain. So you have the main chain that everybody believes is the blockchain of Ethereum Classic, for example. And then you have a copy chain that nobody knows because this chain is secretly created. But this miner is mining on this secretly created chain as well. So more blocks are added to the secret chain than to the main chain. Then the miner is going to use a wallet from the main chain and send some Ethereum Classic to another wallet. But at the same time, this miner is also sending these funds to the newly created chain. And then at the moment that this newly created chain has received the funds, and then this miner will release all these secretly mined blocks on this malicious chain, then this chain is longer than the main chain. So the nodes of this main chain will see this new chain, this malicious chain, as the official blockchain and will accept this chain as the official one. And then the transfer the miner did on the main chain disappears and the new chain will be accepted. And so he was able to transact all these funds from a wallet to a new wallet on this malicious chain. And that is what they call a 51% attack. Sorry guys, if it's a little bit difficult to understand, but you can read beautiful articles about this one if you want to know more about the 51% attack. I found a really cool website to see which blockchain could be attacked as well with this 51% attack. Because you are asking now, oh Didi, can this happen to Bitcoin as well? I will explain to you why it can't happen on Bitcoin as well. To be very clear, to do a 51% attack costs a shitload of money. The 51% attack to Ethereum Classic costed about, I think, 13,000 US dollar per hour. The strange thing is, though, that these hackers can rent hashing power at, for example, NiceHash. So they just rent hashing power at a company like NiceHash and then pay 13,000 US dollar per hour and use this time to hack the whole Ethereum Classic blockchain. How much do you think it will cost to hack the Bitcoin blockchain? Leave a comment below, guys. And while you do so, please give the video already a thumbs up, share it already with your communities, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and now leave the comment. How much do you think it will cost per hour to hack the Bitcoin blockchain? I will give you a few seconds to think about this. One, two, three, four, five, 600 almond trees on this beautiful area of 25,000 square meters. To do a 51% attack to the Bitcoin blockchain will cost you about 490,000 US dollar per hour. And then at the same time, 
you need to be able to rent this hashing power at a miner to have enough hashing power to do this 51% attack. There is a really cool website where you can see these numbers. It's called crypto51.app. Crypto51.app. You can see a table on this one how much it would take to hack one of these blockchains. For example, to hack the Bitcoin blockchain is 487,000 US dollar per hour. But for example, the company NiceHash doesn't have enough hashing power to rent out so that people can even do this 51% attack. So there are two very important things. One, you need to have a shitload of money to rent this hashing power. Two, the place where you will rent this hashing power needs to be able to give you the hashing power to this huge attacks for example on the Bitcoin blockchain. If you want to do this 51% to the Ethereum blockchain you need about 345,000 US dollar per hour. If you want to do the same attack at the BSV uh, Bitcoin Satoshi Vision you need to have 9,000 US dollar per hour so that one comes closer to many people's wallets because it's even cheaper to do the 51% attack on the BSV blockchain than the Ethereum Classic blockchain but again I don't think there is enough hashing power in companies like NiceHash to be able to do this attack on the BSV blockchain. The same kinds for Litecoin. Litecoin will cost you 21,000 US dollar per hour to do a 51% attack, because NiceHash has only about 4% capacity of the total Litecoin blockchain. So not easy to reach 51% of hashing power by using just one Minor. Why was Ethereum Classic the, the easy one? Ethereum Classic just costed $13,000 per hour and at the same time NiceHash had 126% of the hashing power. So it was very easy to buy 51% of the hashing power at just one supplier. Which currency could be next? Um, yeah, which could be next? It was already there. I think it was Bitcoin Gold. Bitcoin Gold was even cheaper. I think it costed $300 US dollar per hour to do a 51% attack on the Bitcoin Gold Network. And I think NiceHash has about 63% of the hashing power of Bitcoin Gold. So that was why this attack was done as well. Um, to be clear, the hackers took 5 million US dollar with doing this Ethereum Classic 51% attack. And yes, it's a lot of money, this 5 million US dollar. But if you want to do the same attack on Bitcoin, which will cost you, let's say, 500,000 US dollar per hour, I think you need to be a very good hacker because the cost of the thing you're doing is probably way above the return you're getting for it. So nobody is even going to try it, in my opinion. That was the video for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, give the video a thumbs up, share it with your communities, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll be notified on every new video I make. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment because I love to reply to your comments, guys. And last but not least, like I always end my videos, you need to zoom out in Bitcoin and you need to zoom in at life. You need to enjoy every single minute of the day because this is exactly what makes life worth living. I wish you guys all an amazing day and hope to see you back tomorrow here at the YouTube channel of the Bitcoin family. See you tomorrow again and enjoy your day to the fullest. Bye.